let's talk about the big data world. And when you talk about big data world, you typically talk about MapReduce jobs, right? Again, big data world, and within big data world, you are working in Hadoop domain, I'm assuming so, right? If you are talking about this, then you are going to talk about your, you know, basically that program testing. Of course, that is very much re relevant here as well. So if you're writing your MapReduce programs in Java, then you know that, right? What are the what are the uni, uh, unit testing frameworks in MapReduce? What are that? Anybody? Right. Right. So MR unit, Mockito, right? They are the so I'm, we are not going to talk about them. Mockito, so basically MR unit uses Mockito internally. So earlier previous releases had Mockito, but now it is suggested to use, right. So exactly, exactly Gaurav. Mockito is for mocking, yes. And this is internally, no, no, so mock, earlier you could use Mockito to perform entire unit testing at, as well. So apart from mocking, you would be able to perform your entire test cases as well. But now, with MR unit coming into picture, it uses those Mockito libraries and or basically those APIs internally. Okay, that's why we suggest that go for MR unit. And in fact, there are others as well. I, I mean, we can probably talk about that sometime later when we are in the relevant webinar, right? So uh, now, so that life is simpler when you are talking about you know these kind of programs. Java, very good. Probably some of you who is working in Hadoop streaming or something and you are writing your MapReduce programs, let's say in any other language like Python, like Ruby, great. You have your own testing frameworks in Python. You have your own testing frameworks in Ruby, right? And other things as well. But what about Pig? Because if you have already worked in big data domain for more than one and a half years, kind of, or let's say around one year also. I'm sure you would have figured out, can somebody answer how much of MapReduce jobs do you actually write now? Those people who are already working on it. How much? How many? Out of 10. Let's say you, you are writing 10, you know, uh, kind of Hadoop programs. How many of them are actually MapReduce jobs today? at least in our organization and in other organizations which have matured, there are very few, only one or 1.5. So what I'm trying to say is only 10 to 10, 10 to 15 percent requirements actually require you to write MapReduce job. Remaining things, people typically prefer pig or hive. Right guys? Why? Because they are the wrappers on the top of it and you just work at kind of you know very high level thing and all of your requirements or whatever you know data flows I when I'll talk about pig pig is a data flow language right it's not a programming language so whatever data flows you will express they would be converted into the MapReduce jobs right so you're not going to write much of the MapReduce programs that is something which I wanted to convey right so then why should I talk about unit testing because I have again my own reasons guys and not only these are not my reasons these are like the reasons which I have heard many times from people. Pig is not a programming language come on what are you talking about it's not a programming language it's a data flow language so why should I test it it's just a data flow right my data flow anyway it's it's self-evident why do you really need to test it? Because I'm not writing any code to implement that. I have just explained the data flow. Pig is the one which is implementing it. So why are you asking me to write that unit test case? Very valid point, guys. Very valid point. Okay. It just converts the pig latent data flows to MapReduce jobs. So again, this is what I'm not doing, right? Another thing is uh, these are some of the reasons. The other thing is uh, talk about uh, you know pig. So in big data projects, if you are going to use PIG, you will typically use for data factory kind of operations. I hope it is clear 
what do we mean by data factory? So there is a thin line between pig and hive, right? Pig is used for data factory kind of operations, whereas hive is typically used for data warehousing kind of operations. So data factory typically like data prep. You are having some raw data. From that you are preparing some usable data. And data warehousing, it's all about your your polished data or your you know prepare uh, that that kind of uh, usable data is now ready. You just have to prepare some reports on the top of it. That's typically called the data warehousing kind of operation, right? So you will love to use Hive in those cases. So anyway, coming back to the scope of Pig, you are going to use Pig for your data factory operations altogether in your project. So since we are here not talking about a programming language, does unit testing make sense at all? And Pig already comes with some diagnostic operators, right? There are diagnostic operators already, like illustrate, like describe, like, ex like explain, right? Like sample. So there are already some diagnostic operators available. So extra over, extra testing, your guys, you are asking me to do extra testing. It is going to be an overhead. These are, this is another very, very valid reason as well, right? So all of these reasons, if you are going to talk about these reasons, if you are having these reasons or if you have heard these reasons from your team, right, they are going to lead to even bigger problems. As the testing in the big data world is again going to be data driven in nature. Guys, this is the big difference between a big data testing profile versus a normal testing profile. Okay. Here, in big data world, even if you talk about the testing, it is going to be data driven. It is not going to be just some functionality driven altogether, okay, or the parameter driven kind of testing. So better make sure that it works because your logic, so what happens is, I am sharing my own experience, guys. It happened with a retailer. We had to process basically last 10 years of, you know, their kind of financial data in our program. 10 years, so it's like our job was running one year, you know, was taking the input of one year data at one point of time, process it, then take, you know, last to basically last year data, last to last year data, and so and so forth, basically 10 iterations. So when we were developing it, and these were very starting days, we developed it, and we kind of used various tools which we only developed for testing, and kind of we did the testing with year one, year two, year three, up to year six. When we were confident that all six years data is matching, we were good. And of course it's a map it was a map reduce job which was going to take quite a lot of time. So we said we are done with it and we got a stamp that okay, tested. Even from the client as well. Very good. Now it went into production. Okay? Uh, that job was monthly. After one month of going into production, when it, it started processing, everything was fine. Only ninth year, I mean, today, let's say you are in 2014, right? Nine years back. So 2005 data, or yes, I think 2005, right? So 2005 data was giving us problem. Why? What happened? Kind of. Everybody was blaming data. Everybody was blaming the client. No, no, it is thoroughly tested and everything. You know what? There was a bug in the program. And just that, for continuously eight years, we never ever got the input data such that we could have tested that bug. Nobody could identify that bug as well. And those were the starting days. We were not even having big unit, you know, uh, proper, uh, basically it was not even pig unit, uh, pig, pig program also. It was kind of Hadoop streaming program. Okay, so we were not even focusing on the testing and we got the stamp even from the, you know, client. So again, it, it was a different nightmare. But yes, so big data testing, if you talk about it, if your, your output is coming exactly same as whatever reference system is, you cannot really say that your program is working correctly. At best, you can say that I'm making the same mistake as the original system. At best, if if at all you are making, guys, make sense. 
I'm just kind of sharing some of my experiences as well in between and must be useful for some of you. Okay, so what is peak unit? Peak unit is as many of you would have heard about, it's basically the unit or guest already. It's a unit testing framework for your peg scripts. Okay, you can test them at unit basically per script level itself. It is not really a star unit framework. When I say star unit, it's not like MR unit framework or for example, J unit framework or you go to any other one, they have what, have, what most of the people have done is they have just built their own, you know, uh, J unit wrappers and they typically call it, so that entire assembly is called star unit framework, okay. It's not really that kind of framework, okay. So what does it, what does it really do, right. So guys, big unit is actually a library which can be used with J unit tests to, to run your pig scripts within the J unit test itself. So you are going to run, you are, you are writing your pig script and you, you can just run them uh, using whatever, right, uh, J unit, from the J unit test you can run it. Next thing, you can overwrite the variables in pig script to provide the data from test rather than the external sources. So for example, when you write your pig scripts, right, I'm sure you say the first statement, what is the first statement always? Assuming that you are not using any UDF, what is the first statement in the in a peg script? It's the load statement, right? You load some file from somewhere in HDFS, right? So instead of loading the data, you can just mock it, right? You can just say that my input data is now coming from the test rather than from a source, okay? And then you can inspect the values of your pig script relations also, right, for the given input data. And the next thing is your store statements can be converted into no operations. When I talk about no operations, your pig script will execute, but it will not really store anything, okay. So that your pig scripts are going to run without any side effects. So you are sure that whatever you are running, be it the local mode, be it the MapReduce mode is not really going to create any other, you know, folder and then is not going to create any problems for anybody else. 